In this video, we'll provide the solution for question number 15 from the practice midterm exam number two for math 2270. We're given three vectors, u, v, and w, which will all live inside of R5. And we say that w is the span of these three vectors, so it's a subspace of R5. We need to find a basis for the orthogonal complement of w. Now, the, the trick to this one here is to remember that the row space of a matrix, if you take its orthogonal complement, this is equal to the null space. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a matrix so that W equals the row space of A. So this would look something like the following. A looks like the matrix. The first row will just be U, 1, 7, negative 2, 98, and 0. Uh, the second row will be V, 3, 0, 1, negative 14, and 168. And then row three will be W, six, one, negative one, zero, and 224, like so. And so notice that the way we set this up, that the row space of A here, it's gonna equal the span of its rows, which would be U, V, and W, and therefore that's equal to capital W, right? So we've created a matrix whose row space is equal to W. The next thing we're gonna do is we're then gonna compute the row reduced echelon form of this matrix. Uh, for which the RREF would look like the following. Uh, again, kind of, I'm going to skip the details of this, but we're going to get 1, 0, 0, negative 3, 43. And then we get 0, 1, 0, 13, and 5. And then 0, 0, 1, negative 5, and 39. Now the instructions do not say I have to show all of my row operations, so therefore I think I can jump to the echelon form without any further calculation there. You'll notice that we have pivots in the first, second, and third columns. So now what we have here is we want to compute the null space of A because that'll equal the orthogonal complement. If W is the row space of A, W perp is then going to equal the null space of A. So we need to find a basis for the null space, for which this is something we're well practiced with. So we see that W perp is going to equal the span of, well, since we have two free variables in this, in this linear system here, looking at this equation or this matrix right here and thinking of the associated homogeneous system of equations, we're going to have um, we're going to have two spanners that'll correspond to our free variables. So what you can see me doing right here, is that I am just recording down, I'm just recognizing that, okay, I have a one in the fourth position, I have a one in the fifth position, these are my free variables. And so then looking at the columns associated to those free variables, I'm gonna write down the opposite of those numbers, uh, in which case you're then gonna get three, negative 13, and positive five. And then for the last column, we end up with negative 43, negative 5, and negative 39. And so this then gives me a basis for the, this gives me a basis for the null space of A, which coincides with the orthogonal complement. So in summary, this is what we do. If you need to find the basis of the orthogonal complement, create a matrix whose rows coincide with the spanning set of said vector space, uh, then row reduce that matrix, find a basis for the null space of said matrix uh, using the usual techniques, and then the basis of the null space will give us a basis for the orthogonal complement.